Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to cover the basics of moving lights around in our scenes. In the Maya interface, we'll go ahead and drop in one each of the basic light types from our lighting shelf. So that's a point light, a spotlight, a directional light, and an area light. If you look in the outliner, you'll see that each light, like many other kinds of transformable nodes in Maya, is broken up into two parts. Now, currently, our outliner is hiding this fact from us, so we want to go ahead and go to the Outliner Display Settings and turn on Shape Displays. That's better. Now we can see the little plus signs which allow us to see both the transform nodes, which contain the information associated with the placement of light, and the shape node, which contains all the attributes of the light. Moving a light is like moving any other geometry or locator in Maya. The same controls apply, the same hotkeys, like transforming and rotating. However, each light has its own foibles. And it's important to remember that these are just locators. They are placeholders. They're meant to help you place your lights, but until you actually hit the render button, you won't have a clear idea of what your scene will actually look like. Take this point light. Because point lights are considered to be both infinitely small and omnidirectional, they don't actually rotate, or scale. Or more accurately, you can scale and rotate them, but the locator itself won't change, and the light will ignore these transformations. As an example of this, let's go to our polygon shelf, create a cube, and parent it underneath the light, which we then scale. And the cube will inherit those transformations, but the light's locator still won't change. Spotlight locators can be scaled, but still this has no effect on the actual light. It's just a convenience for you as an artist. Where this cone ends has no bearing on where the actual light ends. And because spotlights are biased, you can rotate them as well, and wherever this cone is pointing, the light will be pointing as well. Directional lights, like spotlights, can be rotated to determine their direction, and their locators can be scaled for convenience. Again, the scale does not affect the actual light. Unlike both spotlights and point lights, however, the position of a directional light doesn't matter. You can move the locator to wherever is most convenient, but only the orientation matters. Because the light source is considered to be infinitely far away, it has no origin point in space, just a direction. Area lights are the only light type whose locator actually includes a full complement of spatial coordinates, including translation, orientation, and scale. The scale of the light directly translates to the amount of surface area emitting light. There's an indicator on one side of the area light that demonstrates which direction the light is pointing. Lights can also be snapped, and when you snap a light, it will either snap to the origin of the light, in the case of points and spots, or to the center of the locator for directionals and areas. Uh, here I'm using the V hotkey to snap to this little locator. Let's clear out these lights and start with a new spotlight. Spotlights are special in a few ways. First, they have a hidden transformation which allows you to quickly orient them, called the point of interest. To see the point of interest, make sure the light is selected and go to the Modify menu, Transformation Tools, and choose Show Manipulator Tool, or you can use the hotkey T. Now we have two transform handles. When we move the point of interest, the spotlight always stays pointing at it. You can even animate using this point, but it doesn't exist as its own set of transformations, so you can't, for instance, constrain the point of interest to another object. It's only there as a convenience. Also incredibly convenient is the ability to position a light by looking through it like a camera. I'll go ahead and create a small scene for us to demonstrate this ability. Here we have a very basic setup with a few objects and our spotlight. With the light selected, we'll go to the Panels menu inside of our 3D viewport and choose Look Through Selected. Under the hood, Maya has just created a temporary camera which will drive the light. Now we can navigate the scene like we're used to just navigating around a perspective view, but the spotlight is coming along for the ride. The circle in the center of the screen is the cone of the spotlight, which makes this method of positioning especially spotlights extremely useful. You can see exactly what geometry is within the cone. If you need more screen real estate, you can actually edit the attributes on the camera that was generated under the hood, 
Let's go ahead and do that. I'll hide my outliner for the moment and bring up the attributes panel. And here you can see the camera which was created for us. We can adjust the angle of view to give us more visibility. When we switch back to the perspective view, the temporary camera and those settings we just changed will be deleted. All the Maya light types have a point of interest and the ability to be looked through. In fact, you can use the look through method to position any transformation node, even geometry, if you want. Most of the time, these methods are really just useful for spotlights and area lights. That concludes this module in Maya Lighting Fundamentals. In the next module, we'll actually fire up a renderer and start seeing our lights in action as we learn about all the attributes available to us as lighters. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one.